discipline does not actually mean you have to punish yourself when things don't go as planned. We associate discipline with a negative consequence. If you don't do this, then you should feel really fucking bad about it. That's not true. That's not fair because we're human, okay? So instead, discipline can just be you showing up for yourself even when it's hard. Why am I in a robe, basically naked, with my George Washington slick back bun, you ask? Well, this morning was an everything shower. If you don't know what an everything shower is, where are my girlies at that know what it is? I know. I've just had a conversation with one of my friends about it. It's where we do the top to bottom maintenance. Everything, 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 self-care, just all the works, all the works. I was thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get ready before I show up for this video because we're doing video now with the podcast. If you didn't know, we're also on YouTube. And then I was like, okay, the episode that I want to do is all about being flexible with your routine. If I'm going to talk about being flexible, why don't I find a way to be flexible with this routine? And that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to give you guys a little eye open into my weekly routine, which would be this like everything shower day. And then we're also going to talk about why discipline is not the answer when it comes to sticking to a routine and what you should be doing instead. Those of you who are watching on YouTube, don't worry. This robe is not going to come off because I am so smart and I use a chip clip to clip it together so that we're not not flashing anyone because I don't have an OnlyFans and y'all don't pay enough for that right now. We are not monetized yet. Okay, so what did I do? We got our wax done. We're heading out. So I got my wax done, shower, shave, hair mask, slick back, dry brushing. If y'all aren't dry brushing, I've done a whole video on it with my Feel Good Naked Challenge, but it is a game changer. It feels as good on your skin, but it's also when I do my affirmations. Then I did oil pulling with coconut oil where I'm swishing that around my mouth. Work your way up to like 10 to 15 minutes, but I basically do it while I'm doing my entire self-tanner situation, hence why I'm wearing super loose clothing right now, and aka a robe from one of my sweet bridesmaid weddings. Shout out to all the, the amazing brides that I got to be bridesmaids in. I have beautiful robes now because of all of you. And then, you know, skincare, and then I like to end it with tea. And typically, at this point, I would do a little bit of a longer journaling session where I'm reflecting on my week, and gearing up for the weekend, whether it's going to be a working weekend or a combination or anything that needs to shift. Basically, my Fridays are like my follow-up Friday where I tie up loose ends. But since I'm doing that, I like to do it basically naked. (laughs) Um, But you guys get to join me for this. So instead of journaling, we're just going to hang out and talk about routines. And so I'll do a little bit of reflecting, give you guys some perspective on what maybe you need instead of constantly saying, Jago, I need to be more disciplined. Yes and no. Let's actually talk about what you need today. And when it comes to your routine, the importance of actually creating a flexible routine versus trying to always create some perfect routine and telling yourself, I'll start on Monday. Uh uh-uh. uh. We're not waiting till Monday. Whenever you're listening to this episode, I don't care if it's the middle of the week, I don't care if it's the middle of the day. We are going to find a way to set yourself up for success and do one piece of this routine, implement one thing that you learned from this episode into your reality immediately. Immediately. Okay. So when it comes to creating a flexible routine, I talked about with our mindset, the power of our mindset with lucky girl syndrome. And if you didn't listen to the episode, you can go listen to the whole thing. But when you think about lucky girl syndrome, it's essentially what people are calling lucky girl syndrome is the law of assumption. So with the law of assumption, it's telling you and coming with the belief that we act When we act and speak as though we already have what we want in our reality and truly believe it, we're rewarded with those things by that desire in life. So that's the whole concept of like, okay, well, if I tell myself everything always works out for me, I'm the luckiest person out here, everything always falls in place in the way that it's supposed to, everything comes to me in perfect timing, those kind of beliefs as you start to use small wins for that can really help. But That doesn't mean that you just sit there and just let life happen to you. That's not what I was saying with that episode. You are setting yourself up for success. I've heard two different metaphors that I love. One of them is all about what if God gives you, we're like, God, like I want this beautiful cake. Give me this cake, make it happen. And then you look down and you see eggs and flour and baking soda and whatever else goes in a cake because I don't really bake. But all of the ingredients are there. 
but you're just looking for the final product. And so this reminder is that like, yes, everything works out for you. Yes, you can come with that mindset and it's important that you do because that's helping you stick to the small shifts and that helps you roll with the punches when things don't go as planned. It helps you just continue to stay focused on what you want and what you're bringing into your life. So that's why creating a routine is going to be really helpful. But most people think they see these people doing like get ready with me videos. That's why I'm like, this reminds me of that. Like I'm showing up like this. But the reality is not everything is going to work out perfectly, especially if you have kids, a job, like just other things going on in your life. There's so much around us that we can't control. There's a lot that we can within ourselves, especially through our mindset and our actions. But we have to learn to roll with the punches instead of letting it punch and put us down. Because so many people work with me when we first get started with a routine, they're like so happy. They're like, oh my gosh, Jago, you helped me in BCBU. We audit their day and then we create their ideal routine. But then they think that that is what it has to be. They're like, okay, like I'm failing. If I miss if I miss any of these that I'm failing. And some coaches might tell you, you are like, yes, you know, that's wrong. You should just be more disciplined. You shouldn't have pressed snooze. You're a failure. No, you're not. We're just shifting today. Okay. And so that helps us get out of that thought spiral of thinking like, see, I proved to myself that I'm not good enough, that I can't keep this routine. If you can shift into the mindset of like, I have the capability to meet any obstacle that comes my way, overcome it and become stronger because of it. It doesn't mean life has to be hard for you, but it means that when things come up unplanned, when, not if, you are able to shift in a way that still helps you stay aligned with what you ultimately want. So let's talk about creating a flexible routine. First of all, break up with the the perfect routine mindset thinking like it's going to look beautiful and perfect. And you can romanticize it. I think that there's a beautiful thing about that. Actually, my girl, Abby, if you guys don't follow her, Be About Being Better podcast, she talks about romanticizing your morning routine. I love it. Go listen to it. But when it comes to breaking up with perfection, if things don't go as planned, when you spill your coffee on yourself, you get all red lights or something like that, keep the mindset of the lucky girl syndrome. I know this sounds weird, but to be like, you know what? Thank you. I thank God all the time when things like that happen. And not in a way of like, this is great, but I'd rather have that mindset and be like, this is great. Maybe I am getting to work when I'm specifically supposed to get to work. Maybe I dodged an accident. We just don't know. We don't know the full picture. And so if we just allow these things to come together and fall into place, that's great. And then have a routine that supports it with the flexibility. Think of it like you have this lane of like, okay, these are my non-negotiables on either side. Like I'm not going to I don't know, let's stick with sleep. I'm not going to stay up past this time and I'm going to make sure that I'm starting my day for myself in the morning. Whether your routine is five minutes or 50 minutes, you're going to make sure that you're starting your day for you. You're pouring into yourself, even if it's just for five minutes. So those are your things, right? So within that, there's a lot of wiggle room. And so some days you might have the time to have a bougie, amazing, romanticized morning routine like me right now with my everyday shower. That's like a full hour situation, right? But that's not going to be the case every single day. It's not going to be the case with every single individual. So find out what's within your lane on a day-to-day basis. And so you can have that and realize like, maybe I can't do this every day when it comes to my self-care routine, but I can do it weekly. So let's start with that. And that's a great place to start. Now, what can I do daily? Okay, well, I know I can take at least 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes of my day I can not be on my phone, avoid being on my phone, and instead journal or stretch or drink some water or drink some tea and say some affirmations or whatever. Doing that allows you a little bit more flexibility. So breaking up with that can be helpful. Allow space to listen to your body. So it's good to have a routine. And I think structure is awesome because structure does allow freedom. I actually just talked about that on our guest episode. It should have come out before this with Megulini. Structure does create freedom. I love how she phrased that. But With that structure, I don't want you to get stuck. When things don't stick to this plan, how can you still shift and create this routine? How can you still, what can I do? So shifting instead of being like, oh my gosh, I don't have time for a workout. Okay, well, what can I do instead? I can go for a walk. I can do this. Having that flexibility really helps. You're still getting done. You know, you want to get movement every day. Awesome. It might shift a little bit. Challenge yourself to do what you want to do give yourself a range. I talked about this with habits. Give yourself a range of, okay, I'm going to get three to six workouts a week. My non-negotiable is three. 
six would be awesome. In an ideal world, if nothing else happened with work, nothing came up with the kids, I would get six workouts, but I'm going to get at least three. And then the other three maybe can come in a different form of movement. Maybe you're having to multitask and like take a call while you're walking outside. Maybe you're having to pair recording a podcast with doing your self-care in order to do both. Boom. Right now, I am the example of being flexible with my routine. I have a lot going on in my day to day. I need to get a lot done before I leave town, but I am choosing to be flexible and find a way to make it work. You don't need to do everything every single day, but it's good to check in with yourself and be like, what do I need today? I knew I needed to still do some of the self-care stuff because I know it makes me feel good. I know I'm going to feel good in the long run. So I'm making time for it. I also know I'm going to feel really good getting you guys this message through podcasts, through YouTube. So I'm recording this as well. So allow yourself to be a little bit more flexible. When it comes to discipline, this idea of like, I need to be more disciplined. I hear this a lot. And so I want to break it down. Discipline does not actually mean you have to punish yourself when things don't go as planned. We associate discipline with a negative consequence. If you don't do this, then you should feel really fucking bad about it. That's not true. That's not fair because we're human, okay? So instead, discipline can just be you showing up for yourself even when it's hard. So getting confidently uncomfortable means showing up and maybe going to the gym even if you don't quote unquote feel like it, but you know ultimately you're going to feel better in the long run. Maybe it's something doesn't go as planned, like you hit snooze and you feel like you're running late, but instead of beating yourself up, you choose to show yourself some love and say, hey, here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm going to move my workout to after work or at lunch or whatever. So doing that allows you to keep discipline in the sense of you're sticking to your word, you're sticking to what you said you would do, but you're allowing flexibility of not being so mean to yourself. I don't want you to actually discipline yourself when things don't go as planned. And the next question I get from a lot of people is like, okay, well, what is too much grace? I talk about giving grace and giving yourself space for that. And it's relative. Grace is relative based on where you're at right now in that moment. Some days you honestly need to give yourself so much grace that you didn't even get out of bed. You just had to stay in bed and get some extra sleep. But you're giving yourself grace because you brushed your teeth that morning or you took a shower. And I know to some people that don't fight depression, they might not understand that and that might seem crazy to them, whatever. Release that and don't project it onto others. But if you know what I'm talking about with that, give yourself the space and grace for that. Find a way to stretch yourself a little that day. And that level of stretching yourself, getting confidently uncomfortable, it's going to look different in different seasons. In some seasons, it might be that you are going out and going for a walk and that's awesome. But you might be in this new spring season, which a lot of my clients are in this season right now, where they're recognizing that their energy is back up. We've done a lot of healing together this past summer. We've worked on a lot of stuff with our mindset. And so we're ready to challenge ourselves. And instead of focusing on disciplining yourself when you don't do something, we're going to focus on stretching ourselves every single day in some form or fashion, challenging ourselves to do a little bit more, work a little bit harder, show up a little bit more for ourselves every day. Because that 5%, 10% increase every day is going to be bounds and leaps ahead of where you would be if you just were trying to get 110% out of yourself every single day. Instead, ask yourself, what would that look like today? What would growing and challenging myself look like for me today? And if every day you are finding a way to challenge yourself and grow, you are going to step into your highest self. You are going to stay aligned with these routines and habits. You're going to start showing up for yourself more and more and start gaining that trust with yourself again. So focus on challenging yourself without beating yourself up when things don't go as planned. And then also find a plan B. Instead of thinking like, okay, well, Jago said to give me grace, so I press snooze, I'm going to give myself grace and just say, fuck it. Ultimately, in the long run, is that what you really need? Or do you need to show yourself that even on the hard days, even when things don't go as planned, you still show up? That can be a game changer for you. So if that is what we can do, let's focus on what we can still do. And the more you start to realize that, the more you're like, oh, These little kinks in the road, when something comes up, when something doesn't go as planned, it doesn't phase you as much. Like I am not phased in the same way. It doesn't mean I don't still get stressed and overwhelmed, but I don't get debilitated in the same way when it comes to certain routines. I just do it. I check in with myself. A big part of this has been through understanding cycle syncing and understanding where I'm at with my hormones, understanding where I'm at 
within my natural energy. And that has been a huge game changer. And that's something we go deeper into with BCBU, with Body Confident Blueprint in the universe. We dive deeper into it. So definitely a quick plug here. We are open for spring enrollment. So make sure you get in your application so we can talk about if BCB is the right thing for you and you can join the universe. So challenge yourself even when things don't go as planned. Create a routine that allows room for change if and when something comes up. I have my clients create their ideal routine and then we create like maybe a mobile routine. For example, I'm traveling for a week. I might not have every single skincare product. I might not have you know, the same situation as before. So let's figure out what are the things that you know will make you feel your best. Well, you know, you feel really good when you get enough water. You feel really good when you get your breakfast in and get some high protein. You feel great when you start your day with gratitude. That can look different every day. Um, Movement, that movement can look different every day. So having a little bit of flexibility. Let's have an ideal plan and then let's have a plan B. So then you're not feeling as flustered. For those that don't feel as like flexible and able to roll with the punches yet, it does help to have a plan B and even a plan C in your head. That really does help. Another thing that helps a lot of my clients when you're trying to meet yourself where you're at is doing more of a self-care or a routine checklist. I like having an ideal routine that's like here go it goes bing bang boom, we go in this order certain seasons of my life. When I am more busy, having it lined up for me feels really good. Sometimes I allow a little bit of range as far as like how much time I'm going to be taking, but I like doing it in a specific order. Some of my clients do better with having like a menu where they're essentially figuring out, okay, within today, I am going to do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to make sure that I get my workout in. I'm going to make sure that I get to sleep on time, keep my screen time below a certain thing and whatever, hit my protein goal. So they have it to where there are certain actions that support reaching those daily goals and they check them off throughout their day and that helps them. I get decision fatigue because I'm doing a lot within my job. So if I have it already laid out for me and I don't have to think about it, it feels really good. If you look at my notebook right now, on the days that I'm busiest, I need to have structure. So I straight up have from 5.15 a.m. until 5 p.m. what I'm doing. And can things be a little bit more flexible? Yeah, I ended up having to you know push back one thing, but I'm still keeping it in order because that helps me structurally with my brain. And I also know what time of day I have different types of energy. And that's a whole nother thing that I help with my clients as well as far as figuring out where your natural energy is and doing energy typing. But that's something that works really well for me. I want to kind of close this out with thinking more about when it comes to routine, what is it that you're actually trying to achieve? What is the ultimate goal for having structure in a routine for you? Because it looks different for everyone. And also what time commitment feels good for you right now in this season? I have a lot of moms right now who just had a baby and the idea of having quality me time by yourself, is it important? Hell yeah, it is. Should you do it unapologetically? Yes. Should you ask for help? Yes. Should you have to ask? No, but that's another story for another time. Focus on what it is that you need in this season and what can that look like day to day create non-negotiables and what is going to be best for you in that moment. And then you'll grow from there. So if you're right now feeling like going to the gym for an hour feels crazy, you know, doing an hour self-care situation sounds crazy. Okay, let's start with just 30 minutes. Can't do 30. All right. What about 15? 15 sounds crazy. All right. Give me five. Five minutes. You can't do that. All right. I want you to stop right now where you are and take five seconds to just breathe. Take a big inhale. Breathe in. Exhale. How did that feel? That small little piece of your day for you means something. Feel gratitude for taking that time for yourself. And even if it's only in a few breaths, it's a start. So start there and grow your routine. Find flexibility and continue to go deeper in your journey. If you want support with going deeper in this, that is my jam, y'all. This is literally what I do. I love it. It makes my heart so happy because most of my clients, most of the people listening to this, y'all have a big heart. You have such a big heart for others. You are pouring yourself into other people. Your friends call you and you need them and they need you. You are going to go do anything you can for them. Now we'll talk about boundaries on a separate episode, but you are that person that is going to show up for others. And because of that, I want to help you show up for you because you need to be pouring into yourself. You know what they say. You can't pour from an empty cup. Remind yourself that if you are someone who struggles with feeling selfish when you're doing things for yourself, feeling like I 
quote unquote, should be doing this, or I still have so much on my to-do list, or what about my kids or my partner or my work? I feel bad not showing up for them. I feel guilty. Remind yourself, I am going to have so much more energy by taking this time for me. I'm going to feel so good by creating this routine. And guess what? I can be flexible with it and it's going to be better in the long run, not only for me, but for everyone around me. I hope this helped inspire you today. I told you that you need to implement at least one thing for your routine. So whether you're listening to this in morning, afternoon, or night, I want you to think of one thing for your routine you're going to do and do it. If you want to think through your whole routine, that's great. If you want support to find that flexible routine that's your ideal routine, that's where I come in. BCBU is a great place to go. If you're not sure if that's the right start for you, I have other things like confident breakthrough sessions and just different options for you. I want to make sure we find the right fit. So feel free to message me. Feel free to shoot me an email. Message me at JagoFitLife or Confidently Uncomfortable. But let me know what the biggest takeaway from this episode. If you want to really get some accountability, tag us in whatever it is that you do for self-care today, whatever it is that you do to carve out a little bit of time for your new routine. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Chip Clip, for holding it together for me so that my boobs didn't pop out. And I will see you guys next time.